this is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. And we're going to look at King Basha. Now here's a brief description. He's third king of Israel, and he ruled during the days of Asa, reigning in Judah. And we've already done a study on Asa. Now Basha's name means in the consumption, or he that seeks or lays waste. His spiritual state is evil. He's not a good king. His tribe is Issachar. His father's name is Ahijah. His prophet is Jehu. And you find him in the verses 1 Kings 15, 27 through 34, 1 Kings 16, 1 through 8, and 2 Chronicles 16, 1 through 6. So we're going to talk about Basha and the downfall of an assassin. The first thing we see about him is that he conspires. Basha has made the decision that he was going to kill the house of Jeroboam. And Nadab, son of Jeroboam, is king over Israel at this time. And I'm not sure if Basha knew of the prophecy that Ahijah the Shalonite had concerning Jeroboam. But Basha ends up being involved in fulfilling that prophecy. And here's the prophecy. Ahijah tells the wife of Jeroboam that they're doomed. All of them are doomed. He tells them their child's going to die. None of them's going to be left alive. In 1 Kings fourteen ten through 11, he says, Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as a man taketh away dung, till it be all gone. Him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat, for the Lord hath spoken it. So Jeroboam's son becomes king. His name is Nadab. His father has sealed his fate. He's going to die. We talked about Nadab last time and the tragedy of a lost soul that he represents. But it says in 1 Kings fifteen twenty five through 26, And Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned over Israel two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. So, sons usually follow their dads. Nadab was no exception. And it says in verse 27, And Basha, the son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar, conspired against him, and Basha smote him at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines. For Nadab and all Israel laid siege to Gibbethon. So Basha conspires against Nadab in the house of Jeroboam. The conspiracy theory websites were probably flooded during this time with people who had been awaiting the prophecy of Ahijah to come true because he prophesied that Jeroboam's house was going down. Many times prophecies are labeled as conspiracies. And there are a lot of conspiracies today that are thought up out of thin air. However, there are a lot of scriptures that people would label a conspiracy. The Bible-believing crowd saw prophecy fulfilled before their very eyes when Nadab got whacked by Basha. In 1 Kings fifteen twenty-eight, it says, Even in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, did Basha slay him and reign in his stead. So Basha killed Jeroboam's son Nadab when Asa was reigning in Judah. And I'm sure Asa seen it coming. He was a good king whose heart was in the right place. His heart was right in the eyes of the Lord. He probably read about the prophecy in the Bible Believer's Bulletin or something and had been waiting around for this to happen. But it says in verse 29, And it came to pass when he reigned that he smote all the house of Jeroboam. He left not to Jeroboam any that breathed until he had destroyed him according unto the saying of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Ahijah the Shilonite. Ahijah the Shilonite was a true prophet. What he said came to pass. One thing you can say about Basha is God used him to fulfill his word. Just like he uses wicked men to kill each other, to kill other wicked men and fulfill his word. Sometimes he'll use a wicked man to chasten a believer. 1 Kings 15.30 Because of the sins of Jeroboam which he sinned and which he made Israel sin by his provocation wherewith he provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. So the reason the Lord had Ahijah the Shilonite preach against Jeroboam was because of his sins. And that's why he was going to destroy the house of Jeroboam. 
but the prophecy exposed the sins of the house of Jeroboam. And like I said, I'm not sure if Basha knew about Ahijah's prophecy. He may not have gotten the tape. Maybe the live stream wasn't working that day when Ahijah was preaching. But he should have known Nadab was getting wasted because he was a wicked king and what goes around comes around. So Basha should have saw that and learned from that. But it says in 1 Kings fifteen thirty one through 33, Now the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And there was war between Asa and Basha, king of Israel all their days. So Basha just can't get along with anybody. And in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, began Basha, the son of Ahijah, to reign over all Israel in Tirzah, twenty and four years. That's a long time. But he conspires. And the next thing we're going to see is he continues the path of destruction. Basha should have realized the end of living like Jeroboam is destruction. Because, I mean, he's the one that destroyed the house of Jeroboam. Yet he does the same thing. In 1 Kings 15, 34, it says, And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of Jeroboam. And in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. So what you're seeing is the downfall of an assassin. He walks in the way of Jeroboam. And in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. He doesn't try to come up with better ways to be a king. So that maybe he won't get whacked. Uh, he doesn't acknowledge God at all. So Basha killed the bad guys, but ended up being the bad guy. He conspired against the killers, but became a killer. God will use wicked men to kill other wicked men. I mean, he would make a good member of the Suicide Squad. Uh, he would make a good villain of any comic book. I mean, that's how bad Basha was. He's not a good king at all. He does not do good in, in the eyes of the Lord. He doesn't have a heart for God like men like Asa and David and Solomon at the beginning of his reign. And all the kings are compared to David. He falls way short of King David. And David is a type of Jesus Christ in the Bible. And that shows how we fall short of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like Basha falls short of living up to David. But he com continues the path of destruction. That path that Jeroboam started when he started his own religion. And also, Basha cut off supplies to Asa. In Second Chronicles 16.1, it says, In the sixth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none go in or come, none go out or come into Asa, king of Judah. He did this to keep the supplies from coming in to Asa. He thought he could defeat him this way. If he, if he didn't allow supplies to go in, they're going to run out. The enemy would love to cut off your supplies. They would love to have every church shut down. They would love to have all Bible-believing YouTube channels removed. They would even love to have any type of conservative channel removed, even if it didn't talk about the Bible, because they don't like anybody with morals. This way, they can cut off your supply. And this is why I'm constantly building up my physical library at home. I mean, I know that all I need is my King James Bible, but there's nothing wrong with a library. I've got books, I've got CDs, I've got stuff on flash drives. A good thing to do is build up a supply for your library in case they try to cut off your supplies. Second Chronicles 16, 2-3 Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord, out of the king's house, and sent to Benadad, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, There is a league between me and thee, as there was between my father and thy father. Behold! I have sent thee silver and gold. Go, break thy league with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. So Basha's actions led to Asa making this horrible decision of making a league with Benadad. He should have just trusted in the Lord like he did when he went up those one million man army of the Ethiopians. 
In 2 Corinthians 16, 4, it says, And Benadad hearkened unto King Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel, and they smote Elgin and Dan and abel Mayim and all the store cities of Nephtali. Notice that Benadad was bought out. Asa bought out Benadad from his league with Basha. Basha was a friend of the world, and the world can be bought out. It will betray you. It will move on to the next best thing. It says in Second Chronicles 16, 5, And it came to pass when Basha heard it, that he left off building of Ramah and let his work cease. Then Asa, Asa the king took all Judah, and they carried away the stones of Ramah and the timber thereof, wherewith, Asa, wherewith Basha was building, and he built therewith Geba and Mizpah. So Basha didn't even get to finish the wicked work he was trying to accomplish. This is exactly what the world does. The world will give you stuff as you serve it. But then it cuts you off before you can accomplish the wicked worldly desire you had. This happens a lot when mu musicians get big. They go good for a while and make several albums. Then it's like they dropped off the face of the earth and their new albums sound like they were made in a garage somewhere. What happened? Someone broke their league with them. Just like Benadad did with Basha. See, the world will betray you. It'll cut you off and make a league with somebody else who is on the come up, who's new and, and fresh and, and better than you. Never make a league with the world. Stay with God's saints and the Lord. That's all you need. But Basha, he, he, he never had God. He was shacked up with the world his entire life. But Asa, who we've already studied about, but Asa, he made a league with Benadad because he was scared of Basha. So, bad decisions for all these men. Most of these kings don't have very much spiritual sense. In 1 Kings 16.1 it says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Basha, saying, Basha, saying, For as much as I exalted thee out of the dust, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and thou hast walked in the way of Jeroboam, and hast made my people Israel to sin, to provoke me to anger with their sins. So the Lord says by the mouth of Jehu that he exalted Basha out of the dust. He was king because God allowed it to happen, because it was also to fulfill the prophecy. He was involved in the prophecy of destroying the house of Jeroboam. He had an opportunity to make Israel right with the Lord, but instead he made Israel to sin just like the people that got killed that he killed himself. It's the downfall of an assassin. He assassinated the bad people. And then he could have got on the throne and been a hero and turned Israel back to God. If Basha killed the house of Jeroboam, then he should have realized he doesn't want to walk in the same steps because the same thing's just going to happen to him. So he continues the path of destruction. And he comes to the same end as Jeroboam. In 1 Kings 16.3 it says, Behold, I will take away the posterity of Basha and the posterity of his house and will make thy house like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat. So he killed the bad guys, yet he ends up doing the same things that got the bad guys killed. That makes zero sense. That's like a Christian who spends years preaching against the sins of the world and then goes and does the sins of the world himself, knowing what those sins of the world is going to do to him because he saw and preached against those sins of the world for years. But your pos posterity is your descendants, your children. And yeah, his, his posterity is going to be destroyed. He's going to, it's going to be taken away. He ends up with the same end as the man he killed. First Kings 16.4 him that dieth of Basha in the city shall the dogs eat, and him that dieth of his, his in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. What does that say about your family? Basha caused them to go to the dogs. His family went to the dogs because of all his poor decisions. It says, Now the rest of the acts of Basha and what he did and his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? Something about these kings is that they did do something. It says what he did and his might. And they're written down. Are you doing anything as a Christian that would be worth someone writing down in a book? 
Basia was a worker. That's one good thing you can say about him. But the bad thing is, in Philippians 3, 2, it talks about evil workers, and that's what kind of worker he was. Some lost, wicked people are better workers than saved Christians. I mean, they're getting up. I mean, they got evil plans to be a, a super secret villain and to take over the world. But, I mean, they are getting up out of bed and not laying around like a lazy slob. Some Christians are worse than an infidel because they are so lazy. In 1 Kings 16.6, it says, So Basha slept with his fathers and was buried in Tirzah. And Elah, his son, reigned in his stead. So Basha slept with his fathers. He went to the grave just like the rest of the kings. You're not going to live forever. You may accomplish something, but if it isn't for the Lord, then it has no eternal value. Don't be like Basha. He left this world with nothing. The only good thing he accomplished was killing bad people, but then he turned out to be just like those bad people. Don't be like Basha and the downfall of this assassin.